everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Nerd for No Reason podcast. I am your host, Mark, and sitting next to me is... Hi, I'm Raven. I also come here as well. Yay! Hello! <laughs> we made it. <laughs> whoop, whoop. What's oh, up, man? Me. Nothing, man. Hanging out, living the life... You know, doing super fun, ultra instinct things. Um, I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Uh, I was just about to ask you, what I'll, is ultra instinct? You know, fighting for Living? Uh, <laughs> just trying to survive the day. Trying to survive. Getting through another week. Yeah, I mean. Good Lord. It's It's been one of those, like, we've had a very busy week. We've just had doctor's appointments and things like that, so it's just been everything stacking on top of one another. Plus, it's starting to get towards the end of the school year, so we are, like, this Scrambling. is the, This is one of the two times a year, like, once every six months where it's, like, speed run to the end of the month. And yeah. now, now that we're getting in, like, end of April, May time frame where it's the end of the school year... It's like that. It's just boom, plays yeah. and things and stuff. So fun. So yeah, I'm, what about I'm you? so glad I don't have to deal with like school stuff anymore. The only thing that I am excited for for kids to get out of school is the fact that when I like drive around during the day, I don't have to worry about school buses. I don't have to worry about speed limits for kids schools going in getting out it like is a big damper on our day in the summer to be honest <laughs> do you have paramount plus uh maybe i feel like we do maybe i'm wrong what's on there uh what's, what's popping on there i've i love the sonic the hedgehog movies i think they're great fun the first mm -hmm. one especially had was way better than it had any right being. The second one was super fun. And they just released last Friday, they dropped a Knuckles miniseries. Oh. And it stars, you know, Idris Elba, of all people, mm. is back playing Knuckles. And it basically takes some side characters from sonic the hedgehog movies and gives them like you know a little six six episode miniseries and i'm about halfway through it and it is just delightful it is corny and once you accept the fact that um that it's not this big kind of dramatic you know thing it really is just just kind of goofball over the top corny um little miniseries it's a delight and the effects are absolutely movie quality. Like, this is, they put the exact same effort that they did in the last two movies into this show, as far as, like, the way it looks. Nice. And it's, it's wonderful, man. How, like, long are the episodes? About 30 minutes. <clears throat> so, you're... That's not bad. Yeah, you're in and out. Nice, nice, nice. So, have you watched all of them yet? I'm I'm about halfway through, about three episodes in. Okay. okay. Um, there's there's certain parts where I'm just like, man, like is this too corny for me? Because it seems like, uh, I don't know. It's just like certain parts of the story where it's like I know that normal humans don't act like normal grown ups don't act like this. And can I just shut my brain off and enjoy the fact that I'm watching Idris Elba play? You know. In echidna, opposite of um, what's his name, Adam Adam Paley, Adam Paley. I think that's his name. Um, and Christopher Lloyd does a voice of like an ancient echidna, Ooh. or not ancient uh, elder, elder echidna that's like Knuckles' mentor. And it's it's great fun, man. Like it's just it's just kind of a fun show. So yeah, nice. Go check it out, everybody. Okay, that sounds fun. I feel like I haven't watched anything new this week. I'm trying to think if I've watched any, like, good new shows. But really, I've just been on my classic grind of One Piece, trying to get it done. Not done done, but, you know, 
Yeah. At least get like a quarter of the way through. That'd be great. <laughs> so far away. But that's okay. It's all about the journey. <laughs> And the super fun music. I enjoy the intros and the outros so much. Chris will come over and I'm literally just jamming. He's just like, nice. <laughs> I mean, it is pretty, uh, uh, the music is pretty solid. So. Facts. So, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Nope. No. You go. No. I, I don't even know where I was going. Okay. Uh, Go for it. (laughs) Something else came across my radar, and this is just too weird that I felt like I felt like I wanted to bring it up just so I can kind of get it off my chest and 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 like I don't know, get it out in the open so I could talk with someone about it. So apparently, this Spanish website called Vandal um, released this thing that I guess the Switch Two is getting ready to drop really soon. Okay, Mm -hmm. or at least they're going to announce it really soon. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we are coming up, you know, summertime when there's um there's all kinds of announcements gonna be made, you know, we're we're coming up on, on con season. Um, you know, things like that. And so I guess Nintendo had this event and I'm trying to figure out where. But like the big thing was that the joy cons on the new switch are going to be magnetic instead of slide into place like they currently are. But what's so, what's so odd about this, about this report is they were saying that the, the people who got to um, experience these magnetic uh, uh, joy cons, they didn't get to see the switch too. They had to stick their hands in a box and feel it. Nintendo Mm. wasn't showing it. And it was just like this really kind of weird thing. Like, wait a second. Like, why in the world, you know, at this point, just show, like, just show the small group of people, you know, take all the phones and take them out and put them in the little magnetic bags and all this other thing. And, you know, show it to the people you want to show it to. And it was kind of a thing where, you know, they let third party developers or whatever, come in and be like, hey, this is what we're working on, you know, so you can kind of start gearing up for making, you know, third party accessories or whatnot. Um, but yeah, it was just so it was so weird, so weird to me. And apparently the report is, is that the switch Two is going to be larger than the current switch, but not as big as the Steam Deck. Mm. So. Yeah, that's so weird that they. <laughs> put it in a box and they were like here have a feel right it's so yeah it's so absurd like, what man. is the point of that i don't know nintendo is very weird about their stuff they're very mm. litigious about their games um I'll, one of the few times that i have decided to go into the deep dark corners of the internet and find games uh many years ago Actually, I don't even want to say many years ago because it was really only about three. I was like, oh, man, you know what game I really liked? Mario Kart Double Dash for the GameCube. And I was like, ooh, what's this? It's Mario Kart Double Dash for the GameCube. And I got it. And uh, about a week later, I got a nasty gram from my ISP going, hey, we saw that you got Mario Kart Double Dash. And I was thinking to myself, why in the world is Nintendo upset about a game <laughs> that is not in production anymore? It's not selling. It's not. You can't officially get this game anywhere. What are we doing? But apparently, you know, it's it's weird. It's weird. Hmm. So. I don't know how I feel about that. All right. Nintendo, you silly geese. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, well, Raven, you brought to my attention this week too. My other favorite thing that I've seen this week oh. is this great meme format that's been going around. 
You want you want you want to tell the people about it? <laughs> I said I said I said you want to tell the people about it. Oh, what you mean the nice little Froghorn Leghorn meme we got going around, where someone was like, "Uh, just put it into random anime characters," and people have been going wild with it. There's some good ones out there too. I don't know if you saw, but. The voice actor of Foghorn Leghorn has been actually dubbing over, like, some of the stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. I'll have to have Chris find some of those, because he found quite a few of them. And they were funny as heck. It's it's so great, and I love Foghorn Leghorn because I I have a couple relatives that genuinely are foghorn leghorn adjacent and just seeing this go what now i say what's the big idea of trying to get uh <laughs> you know and you're, <laughs> i'm like yep that's that's like three of my uncles right there um but yeah this is like one of these dumb meme trends that i'm just i am fully on board with until like yeah i, I don't know man this is great to me uh, it's the better of the two, like, trends that were happening on, formerly known as Twitter, uh, this week. And the other one is, like, really trash. Here, I'm going to just send you this quick little meme, and that way you can understand. There's been another one that, like, most people uh, hate, and then, God bless, we got the Foghorn Leghorn that has held the Twitter users back. Uh, oh, in their little cages. <laughs> yeah. No, whatever that trend is, is look between blank and blank on your keyboard and see what I don't, it, It's so that, stupid. So dumb. I don't get it in the I least I mean, maybe little we're bit. just getting too old? No, because, like, most people... What do you mean, we're getting too old? <laughs> First of all, oh, technically... Oh, shit, I'm did a, I hit a no, nerve? Well, no, what I'm saying is, like, I'm a part of this, like, Gen Z shit, technically... Because I'm technically, like, right on that cusp. So, like, I feel like I would understand, you know, more stuff. But sometimes these kids just be doing stuff. And most people that I see it, like, hate this format. Or else are like, I don't understand what is happening here. Which I feel like is the general consensus. Is that most people are just like, what? What? You know, kids these days. Yeah, I know, right? Well. They'd just be making up shit. Just like your daughter. It's bad, so it's busting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I know. I still haven't. I, you know what? I, I think it might be time to open that wound back up and be like, hey, you remember when you said this dumb stuff? And she'll be like, I've never said anything of this sort. Hey, Uncle Christopher and Miss Raven know. <laughs> we'll come right back. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, you got anything else? No. You ready to talk about this movie? Because I have strong thoughts. I guess we should get into this movie. Okay. So, I before before we get too started, I want to I explain my thought process here. Okay. Please do. So, I follow on TikTok a bunch of movie movie review content creators because I like movies, and we do movie reviews here on the show. And I am uh, I like a lot of them, and I share a lot of similar thoughts with these people. Uh, and they said, hey, man, I just saw this movie and it's probably the funniest movie that I've seen or that I will see in all of 2024. Oh, my God. This movie is so great and creative and blah, 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 blah. And it was called Hundreds of Beavers. And that was really the only thing I had to go on. And I did just a modicum of research. And, of course, everyone was like, oh, my God. This movie's so great. Oh, man, it's so clever. It's the closest thing we're ever going to get to a live-action cartoon. And I said, sure. So I said, Raven, 
let's watch this movie called Hundreds of Beavers. So, Raven, no. please no. tell me. You're, you're telling me <laughs> your thoughts on this movie first. It's both our first time watching this. And I, I want to know the consequences of your actions and choices. I did not like this movie. What? No. I did. I did not like it. This movie was an hour and 45 minutes and it could be cut down to 30 minutes. And I would have been like, this is great. This movie could have been literally condensed into like mostly the last 30 minutes of this movie. And I would have been like, yo, we got a hit on our hands. You're in and out. Wham, bam. Uh, the fact that this movie is an hour and 45 minutes long makes it a slog. It is clever. I will, g- You know what? I will give it its flowers. It is clever. I think it is a fun concept. Um, I think the, the, it has this very stylized in its effects and what it's going for. Like it picks the theme and goes for it. And we are off to the races. But the fact that for me, that this was like watching a survival game where it's like you start off with nothing. And then by the end of game, you make electricity and build empire. That's essentially what it is. It's like, Ooh, you start off and you hunt beaver and you get one beaver. Then you get knife. Then you use knife to get two beaver. And then you need 100 beavers. Um, yeah, it was just, it did not, um, uh, stimulate my brain the way I think it did other people. Raven, what did you think of hundreds of beavers? Uh, I'm going to read you the three notes that I took <laughs> on this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Note number one, wild start. Number two, how do I even take notes on this? Number three, Looney Tunes live action is all that it just felt like the whole time. It had, like, very much that vibe of, like, something that Bugs Bunny would just be, like, walking around, like, doing something, and then just continue to do the exact same thing over and over, and, you know, it's insanity at this point, because you keep whistling, and this silly little uh, woodpecker keeps coming to fucking knock on your head for whatever reason i don't <laughs> i don't want to knock on this movie and say that you know there was no point to it but i agree with you it could have been a little bit shorter uh after so chris and i sat down to watch it at some point i moved the mouse to see how far we were in i was like chris <laughs> we're not even 20 minutes in and he said i don't know about this we i'm ahead upstairs and i was like I can't blame you. (laughs) So. Yeah. And the funny thing was, is when you said the only three notes I took, I don't even have my notes pulled up right now because usually I sit there with a, uh, with my phone and I'll turn on the, uh, the voice to note feature and I'll take notes fast and like, I can't remember which fast and furious one it was, but it was like three pages of notes because I just could not. I took two notes. This movie is like a real life cartoon, and I am now nine minutes in, and I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. The second note, I think yeah. it's clever, but I think once I get an hour and a half into this movie, it's going to be frustrated, or I'm going to be frustrated as hell. Yeah. Yeah. It's- Considering the fact that there's like no actual talking at all, like. Right. There's just like little noises and stuff. And I don't mind a black and white movie. Honestly, like that was something that me and my mom would love to watch. We would just like watch old horror movies all the time. Uh, But this, this was a little um, interesting. Uh, It's that movie. I said it to Chris earlier and I can't, I'll have to look it up. I'll have to even... You know, honestly, it's gonna take me a second. 
honestly, by the time I got, I think maybe 30 minutes in, I was exhausted by, by what was going on in the movie. You know, it was, it just really seemed like they took a good idea and maybe there's a short version of this somewhere where they mm-hmm. were like, oh man, this is great. And they showed it to a couple, couple people and, and they were like, yo, you need to make an entire feature length movie like did Like go, go for gold, man. And the guy, the director was probably like, yes, I can do it. And again, like I, I do want to kind of commend it on the things that they did do good because this is a very unique film. It is very unique. It is stylized. There's a lot of things going for it. But man, honestly, once he's just started going after the 100 beavers and started infiltrating the dam, mm-hmm. that's the point when I was like, oh man, this movie's really picking up. Um, it was, it, it seemed like the court the courtroom scene with the little beaver with the suspenders who was clearly a southern beaver is like i'm just a southern beaver lawyer you know yeah. like I he was making weird noises somehow in my brain i was like oh this is clearly a southern beaver lawyer um even though he didn't use any dialogue but just that kind of goofiness i was like okay i'm on board with this um but it also could have been that um you know, by that point, I was like, all right, man, we only got 30 minutes left. Stick stick the landing. Um, but it wasn't, hey, I have to get some more beavers and do all these other things to get more, you know, so I can get this girl to marry me. So, yeah. Uh, the thing that I was thinking of was, like, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Oh, yeah. It It has, like kind of that style to it but almost if it was like flipped like the opposite universe of like Rocky and Bullwinkle esque in my head I don't know anyways <laughs> well yeah I don't know have I ever told you about the fact that I don't like uh, big costume characters oh really like furries, like in mascots, you don't you don't really yeah. like them. Yeah, N- no. For the longest time, I was like super afraid of them, and now I still kind of see them, and I go, I know that you're just a person under there. It's a little creepy. I don't mm. I don't like the way that some of them look. The only ones that I would probably ever go up to to be like, I want a photo with this. If it's a freaking like Pikachu or Eevee, I would do that. <laughs> but that like, there's definitely photos of me like upset like with the easter bunny and maybe even like santa claus to be honest (laughs) so yeah when i was just watching this i was like oh we just continued to get more and more beavers (laughs) because i didn't look up anything about this movie you were just like hey let's do this and i was like okay so when we go to start watching it the very first like little screen that pulls up and I don't even remember what it said. Uh, It was, what was it? Something about like purity abstinence. I don't know. Oh yeah. 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 So I was like, huh, this is interesting. And Chris was like, I looked it up. It's a black and white movie and it looks interesting. And yeah, it just, it just stayed in that weird little interesting peak for like so long. And I definitely like faded in and out of it. And I would just like look up and be like, okay, okay. All right. It, it's definitely, like you said, you can absolutely take it down significantly. It doesn't need to be almost two hours. I could definitely follow along just by like glancing up every now and then even though there's no words yep yeah all right which movie do you think we would have shit on more 
Well, actually, there's going to be three now because I forgot that we did All Dogs Go to Heaven. Oh. And then what was the, the French Dispatch? Oh, yeah. And then this. I think it's been like our top three movies that we've been like. And it's funny that <sighs> two of those three are black and white. <laughs> um, yeah. You know what? I think I think the French, the French Dispatch, even though even though we didn't really like it, I think that is, I'll say this. I think the, that out of those three is probably on top of like, probably on top of that list. And then probably hundreds of beavers. And then, uh, all dogs go to heaven. I don't even know so, if I want to say that. So um, all dogs go to heaven is the worst. <sighs> Because honestly, I would agree with that. Yeah. I feel like All Dogs Go to Heaven was not good in so many ways. Right. And this one, like, this one I think you could just cut down and it being, and it be good. It would I, be a good short film. Yes, it would be a fantastic short film. Um, uh, but All Dogs Go to Heaven was one of those movies where you know, you remember watching it as a kid and it's like, oh, this is great. And then you watch it and realize like, no, this, the, the quote unquote main character is irredeemable, you know, up until the very last moment. Yeah. Um, you know, so, and as far as the French dispatch, I think that that's one of those movies, like, even though we didn't really like it, I could see how some people could like it, you know, I yeah. could I could see the appeal of that for a lot of people. It's just not in my wheelhouse of like artsy fartsies, you know, uh uh films. That one felt very dry. I yes. think is the biggest thing that both you and I were like we lost interest in it just because of that. But with the hundreds of beavers, it was more of like it just dragged a lot. Like, yeah. sure, there were good little pieces of it, but it was one of those things. You know what it's like? It's like being at, it's like being at a birthday party with a bunch of kids, and they're mm -hmm. running around and screaming and being goofy, and they're constantly like, they just glom onto you. All the hyperactive kids just glom onto you, and they're like, Mister Mark, can you believe that that uh, uh, that that I had to go get a that I had to go catch a beaver and then I had to go take it to someone and then after I took it to someone then he gave me a knife and like if you kind of look at it through that like by the end you're like oh geez man come on let me go but then inexplicably by the last thirty minutes you're like wait a second you fought a bunch of beavers it's like yeah I kicked them and then I was throwing stuff at them and then we were going down the log flume and it was really cool and you're just for some and then there was a beaver lawyer with suspenders and he was like mama 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 <laughs> <laughs> I can almost feel like Amy would do something like this. Right. Like this feels like an Amy story that she would tell you, you... and she'd be like and guess what? <laughs> and then you're not wrong. I got a knife, but it was little. And then and after I and then after I caught one beaver, then I had to go and catch two beavers so I could get some rope. And then, <laughs> yeah, and, and they would give you every excruciating detail of you know how what um, what thing catches what animal. And again, mm, you yeah. would just be super exhausted. Like, man, please just wrap this up. Like, it is my yeah, social bedtime. Yeah, you're like bedtime. sitting on your phone like, mm-hmm, that's great, buddy. You're doing so good. Thanks. And they're just still going. Yep. That is 100% what this movie felt like now that I think about it. God, I love that kids can't read social cues like that. <laughs> they're just like, and, and, and. And then? <laughs> And also, this happened? It was crazy. You should have been there. <laughs> That's always my favorite. Or <laughs> when kids are like, you should have been there. And it's like, I don't even know you. <laughs> <laughs> kids are so silly. All right. Well. Oh, man. 
Do you have anything else? Uh, no, I don't. I'm so this... glad that you feel the same way I do because I was Lovely like, man, movie. I really hope that she doesn't. Uh, uh... What, what would you have done if I was one of the people that were like, my heavens, this movie, this movie, Mark, this classic. movie. <laughs> I mean, I, I suppose I would have supported you. I would have vehemently disagreed with you. But it wouldn't have been the most absurd take that I've that I've heard on a podcast uh, that I've been a part of. Still, like top tier is when someone tried to correlate the uh, Kiefer Sutherland was a Kiefer Sutherland character. I think it was the Kiefer Sutherland character in the Lost Boys to Jesus. And I was like, you are, I mean, I I was really trying to keep my mouth shut because he had had some very hot takes in in a previous episode of that particular podcast we recorded. But I think he said that and I was like, are you out of your freaking mind, dude? Uh, But I didn't say freaking. Um, But yeah, yeah, like I was like, I think that's the dumbest take on this corny movie I've ever heard. So, but uh, no, I don't have anything else. (laughs) <laughs> I'm ready to move on if you are. Hey, let's do it. All right. Well, in that case, let's go move on to my favorite part of the week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the part of the show where we talk about the little things that have made us happy throughout the week. Be thankful and grateful because not everything has to be this big momentous thing. Sometimes we have little victories. And little things that just put smiles on our face. Raven, what has made you happy this week? So, on Wednesday, I had to look back through my messages. Uh, Chris and I on the weekends love to get us a nice little sweet treat. And so I was looking around, uh, looking at the cookies from Crumble Cookies to be like, maybe we'll get something from here. We've been doing donuts a lot. Or like, whatever. Um... And I was just looking around on the Instagrams, and I found out that there was this place in Lexington that they had the most amazing donuts because they're cronuts. So it's a croissant donut mixed together, and so it's that really, like, flakiness, and it's beautiful. I found out that one of them little bitches is here in Knoxville, and that it opened last week. So, uh, I was literally like full caps sending multiple messages to Chris about how excited I was to go get donuts this weekend. And the place is called Parlor Donuts. They're amazing. They were pretty close to where I worked when I worked in Lexington. So every now and then I might've like gone to get one for like the weekend or whatever, cause I was living alone, doing my thing, and was just like, here we go, a little treat yourself, because you work, like, 60 hours a week, (laughs) but, um, yes, they are so amazing, so we went, and we got donuts on Saturday, and then we had just, like, a lovely little day of looking around at, like, things downtown that normally we wouldn't have looked at just because of the area that it's at so yeah we just had like a nice little time and got some of the most amazing donuts ever my favorite is an orange creamsicle that they have Mm. but unfortunately they didn't have that one today or when we went uh so i got one that was a lemon bar so it had like a nice little lemon frosting on top of it and then i got another one that was a french toast and it's very good So, whenever you guys are in Knoxville, anyone, go try it out. It's amazing. (sighs) And now I'm just going to be thinking about going back there and getting more donuts. (laughs) Well, go live your life. Go get some donuts. (laughs) Be the you you wish to see in the world. Yeah. Eating donuts. (laughs) What about you? What's made you happy this week? Uh, Monday was Amy's birthday. Um, mm-hmm. did I talk about this last week? No, I didn't. Um, cause we recorded weird times last week. Um, last Monday was Amy's birthday. And when we got done eating dinner, 
we shaved off my beard that I had been growing for the past six weeks. And we had us just a big time. Actually, I did think I talked about this because I sent you the picture of me with the mustache and was like, hey, look, don't I look like my dad? Uh, I'm going to talk about it again. I don't care because it was a super fun time. We had us a big time. We cut my beard off in sections. So I came out, uh, we did like one swipe on either side and then I'd come out and I'd have like the super mutton chops with the goatee and I'd be like, hey, everybody, look, here's me in a crazy voice. And then like I'd go back in there and we'd shave some more off and I'd be like, hey, Hey, look, I got a hair to bar mustache now. And then we'd go back in there and I cut it off and, you know, have just the mustache and be like, all right, everybody, here's another character. And it was just a <laughs> fun time. Um, yeah. Me and Amy had a blast. I shaved it off and immediately looked 10 years younger. And I don't know how I feel about it. So, <laughs> but we're going to grow it back out for a little bit and see what happens. Um, yeah, because I don't know. Alice liked it. A bunch of people at work liked it. Um, you know, so we'll see. And on top of that, Amy was in her first play uh, Friday, and we went and saw it. It was Susicle Jr., and she played the judged Yertle the Turtle, and she Ooh. killed it, man. Super proud of her. She knocked it out of the park. She was super nervous, but I'm so glad she did so good. And, yeah, man, just, just. I have such talented kids. And next week is Alice's opening weekend for a show called All Shook Up, which is apparently about Elvis. And I found out today that it is two and a half hours long. And Ooh. I don't know if I'm going to make it that long. Yeah, uh, that's going to be a back row. Amy's was uh, 40 minutes in and out. It was perfect. Uh, you know, I was just like, oh, this is great, man. This is 40, like 40 minutes. With the big clap clap thing at the end, and, and I was like, oh, oh wonderful, wonderful, nice. man, uh, in and out. So I, I don't I don't know about two and a half hours of Elvis music. I'm not that big an Elvis fan. Um, yeah, I don't know. Dang. I don't know. So is Amy wanting to also pursue some form of, like, acting? I think so. I think so, because she... Just to be cool like her big shish... Yes. Um, yes, she does want to do that. And, uh, but I don't know. We'll see like kind of how seriously she wants to, she wants to kind of take it because while she did like it, uh, I think that she also was kind of, um, uh, kind of towards the end, maybe kind of got in her own head a little bit about, you know, doing things and, and whatever. And, I don't know. I think if she gets a gets a little bit more confidence in singing and doing stuff, I don't. I don't know. I might put her in voice lessons. I don't know. I'll ask her. We'll kind of see see what she see what she wants to do. But nice. Uh, no, she she enjoyed it, and she very much like everyone else in the family enjoys performing and entertaining and all of that other stuff. So you know. Oh, good. That sounds cute. Sounds fun. Yep. So, all right. Well, why don't you tell everyone where they can find us on the social media? Uh, if you go on the classic little internets, you probably have some apps on your phone that you can find us uh, anywhere almost at Nerd for No Reason. If you if you like Twitter, I'm going to keep calling it Twitter. You guys cannot stop me. Uh, Instagram. I don't even remember what all's out there. Mark knows all the thingies. I don't. But well, we're probably there. Yeah, we are on <laughs> uh, the Twitter, the Facebook, the Instagrams, um, YouTube, Blue Sky. I think that's it. We're not on TikTok sure. anymore. Oh, wait. What was... What's the one that's connected with instagram oh threads that thing we are on the threads i am not i don't know what that means it's just like twitter except yeah uh supposedly except meta right <laughs> um. that was awful <laughs> so yeah um did you say where you can find yourself 
No, oh. I didn't. Well, tell everyone where they can find you. Well, I guess if you're also on the interwebs, uh, I just hang out on Instagram and Twitter. You can find me on Instagram at that's a Raven Ellis or on Twitter at spooky underscore Raven. That's me. I don't have any other social medias uh, besides Reddit, but I'm never giving out my Reddit account. Y'all try me. Mark, what about you? Where are you located? Uh, let's see. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Turtles Do It. Uh, yeah. And if, oh, also, if you want to reach out to the show, we are um, Nerd for No Reason at Gmail. We got. Ooh. Um, uh, we got it. We we got like our first like legitimate email to the to the that particular way. I don't know how in the world they found our email address, but I'm here for it. It's kind of rocks. So I can only assume that they found it through YouTube. But that's our email address. Hit us up, man. Like it's cool. Just hit us up, nerd for no reason at Gmail. That's what's up, man. Um, yeah. Like, follow, subscribe. Yeah, you all can do the all social those media things. jazz. You can do those things on our wherever you listen to a little podcast. This podcast. You can do things. Yeah. Let us know, you know, what's up. Just say <laughs> hey. That's all we want. Just one hello from, you know, whoever. Anyways. All right. Well, everybody, I'm so glad y'all listened to the show. Um, hit us up. Let us know what you thought of 100 Beavers. And... Um, we got some things in the works, man. I can't wait to talk about it later and let everyone know what we're working on. Um, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be super rad. Uh, and with with all of that being said, go and do something wonderful in the world this week. You guys go and just all the new medias, and we'll see you again here next week on the Nerd for No Reason podcast. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Whoop whoop. Thank you for listening to the Nerd for No Reason podcast. You can find us on all major social media platforms at Nerd for No Reason. Our podcast music is Memories in 8-Bit by Deanna Joan, a.k.a. Fergie's Human. You can follow her on Twitter at Deanna Joan Music and check out her other social media links in the show notes of our podcast. <laughs>